What's up guys, Steve here. Today we're going to talk about the Pokemon Japanese Classic Collection. Do I think it's worth buying? Should you buy it? Is it investable? All these other things, how I will break down the value, what I'm going to do with my boxes, everything in between. Shout out to Pokebeach for all the pictures and information. Thanks for that. Article's in the description. Go have a look. It's a great article. Starting price of this product was 32,000 yen. That was the pre-order price from the Pokemon Center. That usually comes out to around 35 to 40,000 yen shipped once you receive it in your country because shipping and taxes. Straight into it, people. Market price of this product currently. So this is what I've seen. You might have seen something different, but as of the 21st of October, 65 to 75,000 yen is what it keeps like kind of bouncing in between. A lot of them are getting listed. A lot of them are getting sold. It's kind of crazy. But you need to factor in shipping and taxes when you buy overseas. Some countries it's a little bit more and some countries a little bit less, depending on how much it costs to ship a huge box to the classic collection. Because this thing is huge. It's jam-packed full of so much stuff. It's a few kilograms and it's like a, it's like a decently large box, right? So 80k yen. 540 US dollars, 850 Australian. There's rough prices that I like. I converted and added shipping and took away taxes and all sort of stuff. That's what I think it's currently sitting at if you had to buy one from Japan currently. We'll talk about that later. Now, let's talk about these questions that I'll probably get on the video. Reprints. I don't know if they're going to print more. They might. I think they should. Hopefully, they print more because it's a great box and I think as many people should get it at this price as possible. Do I think that's probable? Probably not. Will it go up? I don't know, man. I don't know. It already went up. It comes out at 32,000 yen. People are selling it for 65k. That's already the up. It's unfortunate if you have to buy at this price, you don't get it at this price. But it's already gone up. Will it go up in one, two, three years? Well, go look at some Japanese specialty boxes from a few years ago, see what the prices are now. Draw your own conclusions. Where do I buy it? Okay, this is a pretty scary one. If you're not used to buying from like overseas, Japan, all these other places, I highly suggest just picking one up on eBay and maybe even paying a little bit more than this if this is the current price. If the price of the box goes down, because lots of them get printed, and remember, 32000 was the start price, 65 k is the current price. It can go down because it's got 30000 gap in between. But remember, if you're buying it from people in your own country, they already had to pay the shipping and taxes, so their price is probably going to be a little bit higher. Plus, they took the risk of buying it, plus all these other things. So where do you buy it? Japan... Yeah, it's kind of scary because, you know, they can just ship you the box empty with no cards and that's going to suck, right? And I, I would just suggest buying it from eBay if you are a newer purchaser or buy it from someone you trust. Will I sell them? No, I will not be selling any classic collections. I think I do have a plan to buy a decent amount of them and I probably will sell the contents. I won't sell any cards as singles as far as I'm aware right now, but I will sell the contents of the boxes. So maybe in the future I might sell the box contents, but I won't be selling any cards or at least not sealed boxes. How much do I buy it for? Well, this is a crazy question. It depends, because this isn't a product that's like necessity, right? Everything's that's filled with reprints. If you're a huge Pokemon TCG player, if you don't want the English one, you want to get the Japanese one. Because the problem with this product is the English one is around $800 in Australia right now to pre-order it from like a, you know, a game store or something like that. The Japanese one's around $800. I personally think the Japanese one is a whole lot better than the English one. But how much do I buy it for? That just depends on your budget, how much you have extra to spend. Maybe it might be a good idea to sell some things out of your collection just to justify buying it and adding it into your collection. How much do you buy it for? I think the fifty to 60000 range is like super fair just based on how the world in Pokemon is right now. I think it's filled with 180 cards, some pretty good accessories, and we're going to break that down in a second. And I don't think it's that bad of a product for that price compared to what we had to pay previously. You know, Team Rocket... Team Rocket briefcase was like $300, $400. You got two cards in a briefcase. You didn't even get playmats or anything like that. You know, it's just, I think the price of the product is justifiable if you can see it from a bigger picture. But if you're just a collector who just wants the box, maybe it might be an ideal to wait. Maybe they do more reprints. Maybe they print more next year. Maybe you can get one cheaper there. What do I do? Well, pretty much just harping on what I just said. It's really hard. It depends on your money, how much you got, how much you're willing to spend. I personally think when a new release like this comes out and you're kind of iffy on it, just wait. The price might crash. You know, a bunch of resellers are going to buy a whole bunch of them up and they're going to be selling them all at pretty much the same time in your country. You might be able to get a deal from those people because it's an expensive product. This isn't like a $100 booster box or an $80 booster box. This is like a 65 to 75,000 yen big thing. And maybe the resellers got a whole bunch at this price, but I very, very highly doubt it. And most people will be buying at this price or maybe even a little bit less if they bought earlier on in the week. Just remember, wait for them to crash. I personally think if you were someone that really can't justify $500, $600, $700 for a product like this, just buy a few cards you like out of the collection. Pick them up slowly over time. 
the singles are all going to get broken down and sold online. The sleeves are going to get broken down and sold online. Everything's going to get broken down. Pick up what you want. You don't need a whole, whole big box. It's huge. Like, I'm not going to keep any of my boxes. I'm going to open them all and sell all the accessories. And I'm not even going to come close to keeping that stuff. I don't have space for that thing. So maybe you can find people like me that don't have space. And you can pick up some of the things that you want cheaper. Maybe buy just the Charizard if you're a Charizard guy. So... That's my advice. Let's get on to the value of the box. All right, guys, this is from a seller's perspective, but this also can be incredibly beneficial to a buyer's perspective as they can see how a seller thinks and how they can use that information to take advantage of it and get the product cheaper, right? So in the box, we've got 51 Pokemon, 81 trainers, 48 energies. And I've gone here and I've get, assigned them values. Usually when I get a big product like this and you can break it down, there's cards and every single product has the same amount of cards and have the same cards. You can break the cards down to certain values. And in my experience, this is what they sell for as singles usually. The Pokemon, they look like they're going to be $8 a card on average. Some of them are going to be like four, five, six dollars per card. Some of them are going to be like $30, $40, $50. Cause you know, you got Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, Pikachu, all the starter cards and some pretty good energy cards in there as well. So just remember this is an average. And I usually like to go with like a lower average for products like this because it's already way more expensive than the retail price. So we can't go too crazy because you don't want to adjust high. Then it's just gambling. You know, this is actually calculated gambling. But if you're just going crazy, that's actually real gambling, right? <laughs> so Pokemon here, I value them at $8 per card. Now remember, that's $8 USD. So overall, the total value of the box is $895 US dollars. But we're going to break this down and see how I got there. The Pokemon, yes, $8 per card. And you know, some of them are a little bit worse and they're not going to go for $8, right? But some of them, like I've explained, are going to go much, much higher. So $408 for the Pokemon. Energy cards, $3 per, you know, grass and water energy. They're not going to be that much compared to fire energies and double colorless energies. But on average, I think three to maybe $6. Maybe you might see fire energy selling at 10, 12, 13, 14 US dollars. I'm not hundred percent sure. It's been a while since something like this come out, but we'll see. I just think $3 per card is pretty conservative. Trainer cards, another $3 per card. Some of them are pretty junk. Some are pretty good. You got some pretty popular trainers in there. You know, you got some E-Series trainer. You got the, the Rockets Admin trainer. You got a pretty good ones. So I think $3 per card on the trainer is another conservative $3 per card. It's not too bad. And the accessories on the box, I think all up everything together, you get three sets of sleeves. You get this massive looking playmat box thing that's pretty cool. You get this cool little dice rolling thing that you get in the middle. You get really nice looking like counters and game counters and all these other things, damage counters, poison, burn counter. I saw the product in person in Japan. I saw all the cards in person in Japan and I think it's a kick-ass fucking product. It's pretty damn good. So $100 for all the accessories is what I'm valuing. It's probably what I'm going to sell mine for, 100 USD, whatever that is in Australian, and I'll add on shipping and just try to get this stuff out of my house. But you know, maybe the accessories might go a lot cheaper for the first few weeks as people just want to get their money back and want to clear them out. So overall, $895 US dollars for the box at its current value is what I think it is. That's when you justify buying it at the price on the other side, 540 for a sealed box. Now, if the sealed box is $200, all these values would be a whole lot different. I'm basing this on the current price of the box. Please remember that if the prices do crash on the box and they print another 100,000 of them, well, I think these values will probably go down quite significantly. We can all agree on that. Don't hate me if you try and do this and everything in between. What am I going to do with this product? It's a big question. What am I going to do? So firstly, I plan on buying 20 boxes. I think 20 boxes is a pretty good amount for me. I'll have 20 Charizards, 20 Blastoise, 20 Venusaur. I'll probably grade all those cards. I'll probably grade all the Pikachus. Maybe grade like 10 Charmanders, 10 Bulbasaur, 10 Squirtles. Maybe like 5 Charmillion, 5 War Turtles, 5 Ivysaurs. And then a few other hit cards here and there. I'll probably grade a few. Maybe like 3 of each energy. And then we'll see how much I have left over. The rest of them, I will most likely keep to grade slowly over time. Because, you know... This box is pretty comparable to the 25th anniversary set, the promo pack set, not the box set in Japanese. And I think a lot of these cards will have a little bit of demand, no matter what it is as a PSA 10. Now, am I going to grade every single one? Most likely not. I might even sell them as singles over time. Maybe I get all the product in and I realize, hey, they're selling really well. I could put all the singles up straight away. I don't have any plans to sell the singles. But if I decide at the time when I receive my boxes, that it's a good idea, I will be selling the singles. Immediately, I'm going to try and sell every single box accessory as I can for this price. I'm going to dump them. If people are selling them lower, I'm most likely going to go lower than that and just completely get rid of them as I don't have space. That's the only reason. I don't have anywhere in my house to keep 20 of these huge ass boxes. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do with them. You don't have to do that. I think it's a generally the best play possible, the best idea possible. Now, if I was a buyer of the cards and not the box complete, all I would do is just wait. 
people are going to buy these. They're paying secondary market prices. It's the same stuff every time, people. People are going to buy them. Everyone's going to be undercutting, undercutting, trying to sell underneath. And all you got to do is wait for the lowest. You just keep an eye on it. Check it every day. Check it every twice a day. You know, just have a look. See which cards you want. Maybe you only collect a few cards. Just buy those. Just remember, sellers are going to be undercutting each other like crazy. If you want to buy a PSA 10 of one of these cards, don't buy the first one that comes out. I mean, it's just going to be the most expensive. The first one will be here, and then every single one sold after that. Until the box starts creeping up. The moment the box price starts creeping up, a year from now, that's a completely different story. Everything's already fleshed out. No one has hundreds of boxes. They're grading, flipping, buying, sealed, selling. Who knows what the box price does, to be honest. You know, I, I honestly think if you're buying this and you want to get the maximum value out of it, maybe you want to buy it and you want to keep just the Charizard. You just sell the rest. You can take my advice with this. Maybe do something similar. Sell the cards in bulk. Maybe sell a few other decks. Maybe sell the accessories, anything like that. Just remember that even if you buy this box at 500 USD, like out on the other side, and it goes to 1,000 USD in 12 months' time, that's not bad. You didn't have to do anything. But I really do think you can buy the box, split it up, maybe put a few hours worth of time in it, and get 400, 500 USD more over a one to two, three month span. And it's only three months. It's a lot better than one year. Plus, you never know what's going to happen. What if it doesn't hit $1,000? Well, that shit hits the fan, right? So I hope you guys like this video of me explaining this new product. I mean, yeah, I don't really do videos on new products all the time, as it's not really like something I like to talk about or really try and explain my in-depth processes to people because it's just not really that relevant. It's not that important. And maybe it's not even that good to watch. Maybe it is good to watch. Maybe just let me know. And then I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoy the video.